Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I'm going to be showing off Fedora 39, which was released this month. The latest version of the popular distribution features GNOME 45, and you know what? It's actually a boring release, but boring doesn't always mean bad, which is something I'll elaborate on shortly. However, before I get into today's review, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video. Actually, let's not do that. I want to talk about something even more important than a sponsor, and I'm referring to you. Yes, you, really. Because of you, my awesome audience, Learn Linux TV, as of today, literally today, this morning, has reached 500,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I just can't believe that we've reached this milestone. But without you, that wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now, one more thing before we get started. If you are one of the 500,000 subscribers, then you no doubt realize that this isn't my usual location, is it? Well, I'm building out a brand new studio as I record this, and it's not done yet. Nothing's final. The camera, the lighting, the microphone, nothing's final. It's a work in progress. So if anything looks or sounds out of place, well, just go ahead and let that slide for now because I'm still in the middle of tuning everything. Hopefully by the time I record my next video, everything will be completely set up. But what I'm gonna do right now is switch over to Fedora 39. Let's go ahead and check it out. And here's Fedora in all its glory. Now, if what you're seeing right now doesn't look at all like what you expected to see, there's a reason for that. I'm showing you Fedora 1. Now you might be wondering, why am I showing you Fedora 1? Well, the reason is because this is the very first release and with this new release, the Fedora project is celebrating 20 years. In fact, Fedora 39 was released almost on the day of the 20th anniversary. So congratulations to everyone that helped make Fedora possible. We really appreciate it. And now after 20 years of Fedora, we go from this to this. And here we're seeing Fedora 39, the version that was released this month in November of 2023. Now, you might be wondering, what awesome new features can you expect to see with this new release? The answer, well, not all that much. I mentioned during the intro that this release is a boring release, and I mean it. There's really not all that much to talk about. But the thing is, boring doesn't always mean bad. If I had something to complain about, then it wouldn't be a boring review, but I don't have anything to complain about. There's also not all that many features to talk about. We get the latest GNOME desktop in Fedora 39, just like we always do. But this latest release is more of a, well, incremental release. That's how this feels. This is very similar to the previous release. There's not all that many new features to talk about. In fact, well, it's standard Fedora. The thing is, Fedora has matured over the years and it's found its core audience. It's intended for administrators, developers, enthusiasts, or anyone that wants a stable GNOME desktop without anything getting in between you and getting your work done. So the focus is less on new features that set it apart from other distributions, and it's more about synchronizing with the latest release of the GNOME desktop. So if you're looking for a flagship GNOME distribution, then Fedora might be a great fit for you. When it comes to GNOME 45, which provides the user interface for the primary spin of Fedora, there's also not a lot to talk about. There's smaller features and improvements all over, but nothing huge that really stands out. In fact, GNOME 45 comes across as mostly an incremental release, and everything else in Fedora 39 is the same as you might remember it. Among the changes in GNOME 45, we have a brand new Activities button now. Instead of only showing the word Activities at the upper left corner of the screen, this button shows you which workspace you're currently using. If that doesn't make sense, well, let's see it in action, and I think you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. As always, we have multiple workspaces in GNOME, and when we open an additional workspace, you'll notice that the icon changes to correspond to not only how many workspaces you have open, but also which one you're currently viewing. For those that are new to GNOME and have no idea what I'm talking about, dynamic workspaces have been a feature in GNOME for quite some time. Unlike most desktops, you don't define a particular number of workspaces in GNOME. You always have one empty workspace, and the number of workspaces that you have will change based on how many you're currently using. You can use keyboard shortcuts to switch between workspaces, or you can open the Activities Overview, which you can also use to switch workspaces or view a list of currently installed applications. The functionality of the Activities button isn't any different now in this release. The change is entirely visual. 
Personally, I like this a lot more because having the activities button correspond to workspaces gives it functionality beyond just showing the word activities. Another interesting change is with files, the default file manager for the GNOME desktop. This time around in list view, you can now customize which columns are visible. And this isn't something that's earth shattering or anything like that. And you could probably make a sound argument that this is a feature we should have already had, but it's still welcome all the same. Other than these, there's a number of smaller improvements, but most of them don't really translate to a video review. For example, you can press Super and S to open the Quick Settings menu, which is a brand new keyboard shortcut here in GNOME 45. Every time I press it, you can see the Quick Settings menu open, but you'll have to take my word for it that I'm pressing Super and S. In addition, Fedora 39 sees some performance improvements as well, and it's a very solid release overall. Like I mentioned, it's also a very boring release, and that's actually a good thing in my opinion. Sometimes boring is good because that also means that there's nothing to complain about. Nothing's broken, nothing failed, everything works well, completely fine. So considering I've had no issues with this release, the only conclusion that I could come to is that it's a very solid and stable release, and a stable distribution based on GNOME 45, that's a good thing in my opinion. For those of you that are looking for a quality Linux distribution based on the GNOME desktop, then Fedora 39 is something that I can recommend without hesitation. The thing is, Fedora 39 is a release that'll either win you over or, well, turn you off. Do you want something exciting or do you want something tried and true? If you want something that's more consistent, then Fedora 39 is a great release, but if you're looking for something that is going to wow you or show you something you haven't seen before, well, you're not really going to get that in this particular release of Fedora. If you are already a fan of Fedora, then you're going to love this release as well, just as you may have enjoyed others. If you're not a fan of Fedora, then Fedora 39 is more of the same and probably won't win you over. That said, considering that Fedora 39 is a solid release, I absolutely recommend it. It has very good performance, all of my hardware worked out of the box, the integration of the GNOME desktop this time around is just as solid as it's ever been, it's stable, and it's well put together. And there you have it. I know this review was shorter than most, but again, there's really not all that much to talk about. Fedora 39 is great, I absolutely recommend it, and I definitely think you should give it a spin right now. Just go ahead and give it a download and let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're looking for a distribution of Linux that is tried and true and stable, like I mentioned, I think Fedora is going to be a great fit for you. If you're a fan of the GNOME desktop, then definitely try Fedora 39 because you're really going to love it. In addition, thank you so much to everyone that has made Fedora possible, I really appreciate all the work that has gone into this release over the years, and 20 years of a Linux distro, that's a very amazing accomplishment. In fact, well, I guess we have something that's amazing to talk about, don't we? 20 years of Fedora, that's a great thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video, I really appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.